at some point. And then um, Mark also has a deck that he's going to be uh, providing with us as well. So um, not saying not to take notes, but there will be <laughs> a deck a deck available. So go ahead, open up your chat. And I want to know what your favorite condiments are. The condiment you can't live without. Let's hear about it. Um, and the weirder, the better. I know one person on the line has the weirdest condiment that I've ever heard of in my life. And we're still letting people in. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes while people get into the, the room. Sriracha. Nice. I'm a hot sauce person. Oh my gosh. Banana ketchup, everybody. There it is. Banana ketchup, eh? Oh, okay. So we'll have, we'll get, we'll get Grace to explain the banana ketchup in a minute, but olives and mustard. That is an interesting one. <laughs> olives and mustard. Wow. Mm. That's a lot of tang. Like I can, I just, I can feel it like way back up in here. <laughs> All the tang hitting me. Sweet chili sauce. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. 100%. Mark, you're saying... Dijon. Uh, ah, nice. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And then Mark... Now lots of mustard, saying, eh? What else we got? We got second mark saying hot sauce. The question is, is it is it Frank's hot sauce or yeah. <laughs> yeah. or is it like special intense Mexican hot sauce, the real stuff? There's so many levels of hot sauce. Whoever's on the phone, you have to tell us your condiment or we're booting you out. No, nope. <laughs> not gonna do it. You're getting cut. Is that what you guys are? Well, tough. I'm not gonna be that mean. <laughs> well, I'll just put them on mute. <laughs> okay, it looks like we've let everybody into the room. Um, okay. Ooh, La Bamba. What I don't know that? what that is. Mary, um, you have to unmute and tell us what La Bamba is. I don't know that. Mary's not going to unmute. unmute. I'll <laughs> look it up later and I'll send it to everybody. Um, but so far, okay, so banana ketchup I have never tried and La Bamba I don't know. But um, I will have to say I don't know that I'll ever try banana ketchup. We'll see. I'm bringing um, it into the office and we're all going back in. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough to tempt me. <laughs> it's like it's... it's oh, um, visuals. Visual. <laughs> okay. It's a Filipino condiment. I actually, I've seen it growing up. I only tried it maybe a month, two months ago before lockdown. And um, after having it, I thought, oh my gosh, it's 33 years of my life. I can't believe I've been missing <laughs> out on this. It's got a hint of spice and sweet. Okay. Um, I, I so can't do it, ketchup anymore. Does it actually have bananas in it? I just looked at the rest, at the ingredients and it does. Okay. Oh. So extra sweetness, banana yeah. sweetness. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. All right. Maybe. I'll, maybe I'll try it. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get this party started. Thank you, everyone, for doing our icebreaker with us. That was uh, that's fun. There's always something interesting that comes through there, and I think our talent professionals like mustard and tangy things. That's what I'm getting out of that. Um, so thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your busy day. Just as a reminder. Um, we're recording this session, so um, that's really just for you guys if you want to share it to someone else. We don't go far and wide with the recordings. Um, we keep them pretty tight to the vest. Uh, so just if you've got someone that you, you want to share more information with, then just drop us a line, either me or Paul or Grace. 
um, and it's our name at the ICA.ca and we will send that along um, after the session. So thank you very much Mark Neves for joining us today. Mark is the Director Central, Central for NABS Canada and he's really been the one that has um, spearheaded. We know we've had Louise Barube on a couple of times speaking with us on mental health um, and all the really fabulous programs that NABS is doing to support folks in the industry um, and had told us a while ago that this job portal was coming. We're all really excited about that now it has finally launched. Um, and so Mark is here with us today. He's going to um, just take us through a few slides and then show us the portal and then let us know how, what we need to do as agencies to make sure that our profiles get on there and that we can start using it as soon as possible. So over to you, Mark, you can um, do a little introduction and then get right into yeah. your presentation. For sure. So you guys can see my slide? You're good? Okay. Um, so thanks, Leah. Uh, my name is Mark Nevis. So Director of Central, what that means is at NAVS, we have three offices across the country, one in Vancouver, one in Montreal, one in Toronto. Uh, so I manage the Toronto office. We're located at Young and St. Clair, if you ever, guys ever want to come by. Um, so I'll, I, I manage the Toronto office, but I also support the other offices and special initiatives and any service and program related uh, project that comes up that needs admin or technology support. And in this case, that being the job portal that I'm going to show you today. Uh, those are my coordinates. You can always reach out if you have any questions you're too shy to ask for whatever reason during the session. Uh, you can always reach out um, and follow up after the after this call. So I always take the time, a couple minutes, to kind of lay the groundwork uh, for NABS, uh, just in case for whatever reason you're not really, really fully briefed on NABS. Uh, NABS is the industry charity for the marketing communications industry in Canada. Uh, I just always have the mission statement up there so you kind of know what we do. But in a nutshell, we support marketing and communications professionals across the country. So we provide mental health, uh, mental wellness support, career support, uh, financial guidance through various programs that include, uh, we have a counseling support service that runs 24 seven, 365. Uh, and that's administered through various modalities, whether it be phone, web, or chat. Uh, we have a health and wellness platform called Vicepeak. Uh, it contains library of videos and access to subject matter experts on dozens of subjects related to health and wellness, including preventative health, mental health, stress management, relationships, financial health, professional development, parenting and caregiving, and children's health. Uh, we also have uh, several career coaching opportunities, whether they be one-on-one -on -one or in group settings. And we also offer financial support programs in cases where clients are diagnosed with critical illness or are dealing with prolonged unemployment. So I encourage you to check us out nabs.org if you want to learn more about what we do. Um, and I can't take all the credit for this platform. Uh, we had a partner in crime on this uh, and they're called Talent Code. So they're a partner, they're a partner that we uh, worked with to develop the site. Uh, and we've also worked with them in many cases um, when there have been larger scale layoffs and, and they have to step in and, and support individuals with outplacement and other types of programs. Um, so as you can appreciate it now, as we try and connect with people that are losing their jobs as early as possible in the process uh, to best offer our support. So Talent Code offers HR and talent acquisition consulting. Uh, they're a collective, so they work with various professionals across the country. And they can offer very specific support on a case-by-case -case basis, but I can also scale up to offer a full suite of uh, HR services. So I also encourage you to check them out, talentcode.ca. Um, so where did the idea for this site come from? So basically, at NAVS, we've always found that we're challenged because we can continue to support an individual and equip them with everything they need as an individual or as a professional. Uh, but ultimately, how quickly they land in their next opportunity determines how long and how deep our support is going to have to go. So NABS is built as a short-term measure that's supposed to be a stopgap to help an individual get into that next phase of their life. Um, so while we continue to do that and we, while we continue to offer through key partners, um, 
professional skills, career coaching, one-on-one coaching, one -on -one coaching, all those things I mentioned before. We wanted to figure out how to better support people uh, at this next phase of the process. So when they're looking for a job, how can we provide them with the, the opportunity and connect them with employers in a, in a quick and easy way um, to facilitate them getting their next opportunity? And then of course came the current COVID crisis. Um, Scott, who's the lead at uh, Talent Code, had experience with how the recovery went after the last recession in 2008 and 2009. And what he found was, and him being a recruiter at the time, he saw a lot of hiring in that first phase of the recovery on a freelancing contract basis. So given that, on top of the fact that many would be looking for work at the same time, um, some of them freelancing for the first time, we felt like we had to do something to really help people get back to work. So that's where this NABS Connects platform comes in. So we started with the fact that we wanted to build something that would become a community hub for employers and candidates. Um, by linking to other NAB's relevant resources for individuals seek, seeking work, but also other programs that are trying to support freelancers, creatives, and other subgroups of the industry as well during this time. So a key part of the site is built on that concept of being a community hub. And we felt really strongly that this had to be free from the beginning and continue to be free for both employers and employees. So there wouldn't be any barrier to entry. And also the fact that it's free allows you to continue to work with whatever, um, through whatever workflow works for you. So if you work with a talent acquisition team, either internal or external, uh, maybe you already have processes set up with uh, LinkedIn or other uh, other services. So we don't want to take away from that necessarily. Um, and that's part of the reason why we made it free. You can, you can use our service in addition to other services in combination with other services. Um, you can share jobs through social and email from our platform. So that can connect into whatever workflow that you're doing outside of the, the, the NABS Connect site. Um, it's all about connecting employers to candidates. And we tried to, we tried to incorporate a wide range of job types. Uh, and categories to be inclusive for the whole industry. So that's an ongoing process. Um, and as I'm sure you can appreciate, we wanna be inclusive, but we also don't wanna make the site unwieldy to navigate. So we have to strike that fine balance of um, getting really granular on how, we, how an individual identifies themselves uh, from a skill set standpoint and how employers are gonna post jobs, but also recognizing that you can group those into categories. Um, and we hope we've done a good job of that. And we wanted to make it as easy to use as possible. So very clean interface, very simple. Uh, we also made it very quick for a candidate or employer to post. Uh, so because we knew the more difficult we made it uh, or the longer we made it, it the more drop off we would get. So all this again, with the goal uh, to get people back to work as quickly as possible. So. I'm just gonna show you an image uh, of what the website looks like in a second. I'm gonna take you there and, and show you how, how it works. Um, everything, so just right off the bat, everything on the site is fully searchable uh, and all the categories have built-in filtering so that you can quickly find what and who you're looking for. Uh, and as you can see, just based on the tabs that are on the site, uh, we try to make it as easy to find what you're looking for as possible. So. Candidates, that's where individuals can build and publish their profiles. Um, as, again, also have the ability to connect to external platforms like LinkedIn if you wish to do so. Um, so the only, the only caveat I will, I will say about that is you don't have the ability to bring information in from a platform like LinkedIn. So if I'm in a candidate um, and I have a pretty robust LinkedIn profile. I don't have the ability to just log into LinkedIn and, and bring stuff over. I, I, that is a little bit of extra work for a candidate to do, to do that process over again. Uh, for the, on the employer side, uh, similar to candidates, we're asking employers to create a profile so that all their activity and all the job posting activity that they, they put up uh, is all grouped under their account. And I'll get into what that looks like when we get in there. Uh, jobs, that's where all the opportunities are listed. About uh, the about section has information about, uh, about the platform, about NABS and about talent code. 
FAQs. So I tried to get in front of the most common questions that we thought would we would have. Uh, and as I get a deluge of questions on a regular basis, I try to add some questions on there and answers on there so that um, can help you as much as possible in your setup phase. I'm telling you, it wouldn't take you longer than five minutes to set up. So I hope you wouldn't um, encounter any issues, but if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to me uh, or Scott at Talent Code. And then resources. So back to the idea of this being a community hub, uh, we thought it was really, really important to have a separate section of the page or of the site uh, that listed outside resources that are trying to support people through this period as well. So on the resources page, there's um, services specifically designed for freelancers. Um, there's another site that's doing something similar at a much smaller scale for creatives. Um, so we want to connect people with those pro with those pro programs or sites um, if it's applicable for them, because ultimately we just want to get people back to work. So I'm going to switch over to the actual site uh, so I can show you what it looks like um, with a live demo. And then I encourage you, um, you can always stop me at any time if you see something that you have a question about, or if not, you can just wait till the end, that's totally fine. So uh, this is the live site. If you scroll down um, right on the home page, if this is your first time here and you wanna create a profile, um, you can create a profile as an employer or as a candidate. Um, and then you can also, as people, as employers start to build uh, profiles and start to post jobs, you'll be able to search or click on categories of, of types of jobs uh, that you want to look at as well. Or you can just search, it's totally up to you. So right off the bat, I would encourage you. So obviously one of my asks at the end of the session is going to be go on there and create a profile if you're an employer. Um, but also think about how you work internally and what makes sense for you. So uh, I've worked with some employers who have an agency network that they, that they work across, they work over multiple companies. So for them, it makes sense to make one profile for the entire group and they have a team that manages uh, that entire group. In other cases, you may have someone that is, is responsible for a specific, specific firm. So I would make this uh, a profile for that specific firm as well. So, if you have any questions on how, like, what's the best way to do that, uh, just send me a note because otherwise um, you may just have to share one login amongst your team, which is probably the easiest way to, to manage the, the, uh, the platform for your team. So you can easily come in here, uh, create an account, create a, uh, a candidate profile if you'd like. Uh, as I mentioned, the candidates, uh, the idea here is that individuals create a profile for themselves um, and we haven't limited them or required too much information so that's super easy to get for them to get on there. Um, and if it's as simple as for them as creating a profile and linking it to some kind of external site, so in this case, LinkedIn, to just direct the traffic there, that's completely fine. Um, but you also have the ability to create a pretty robust profile on here. Um, and what that allows you to do is both share that profile with uh, potential employers, but also when you apply for a job, um, that employer then has the ability to download your entire CV all in one place. So um, the, more, the more information the candidate puts on here, the easier they make it for the employer when the employer goes in to actually review their information. From the employer standpoint, um, employers are listed here. So it's basically an employer profile. So they has all the information about uh, that specific employer that they've decided to share. And then as they, um, as they share jobs, the jobs will just appear under their profile. Um, so you have the ability to connect with that, uh, the individual managing that profile directly from the platform if you wish, if you're a candidate looking for more information about a, a, about a position as well. And then jobs, obviously, both sides, that's why people are here, right? So 
um, built in to the job creation uh, process is the ability to, to specify what type of job you're posting. And we thought that was important right off the bat because to give you a little bit of background, when we first went to approach, when we first uh, had the conversation with Talent Code and start, started talking to a development and design team, uh, let me tell you, developing a website in three weeks from like concept to going live is crazy. <laughs> so, um, but the initial concept was focusing on freelance and contract workers that were going to be particularly in need during this period post crisis. And then we decided, you know, why limit ourselves? So we're going to open it up uh, so that you can post full-time positions. You can post part-time positions, uh, look at freelancer or contract, however you want to define it internally. And then also the ability to, um, post internships as well. So all that functionality is in there. Um, if you want to specify what kind of job you're posting. So in this case, I've, there's a few firms that have jumped on and started to fill out profiles and, and post jobs. We've been live for about two and a half weeks now. Um, we have about a thousand visitors a week to the site. Um, and we're approaching a hundred candidates that have have uh, built profiles. So we're starting to build a little bit of momentum. Um, but again, I encourage you all to uh, check it out at some point this week. If you have any questions, um, reach out to me and I can walk you through setting up a profile. Um, otherwise, um, we can do one for you. So what we've done with, uh, with in some cases is um, helped an employer set, set up their profile. So you could literally send my team um, your company profile information that you want up there. We can set it up and we can send you a, a welcome email. Um, and then you're all set up. Then whenever you're ready to go, um, you can post a job. So I know, I know for some of you, it might be early to be posting jobs, depending on what's going on internally at your firm. Um, I know through some of the conversations I've had with, um, with some agency groups, there's kind of this awkward position that you're in. If, you know, there's been a public statement made around a hiring freeze or other similar type arrangements, and then you have to now go to market and, and find specific talent for, for specific work, whether it be you're skilling up for, for a particular project, or it actually turns out a, a client is increasing spending for whatever reason. So, um, whether you're planning on using the platform today or, you know, a month from now, I encourage you to set up a profile, uh, and kind of see how the whole thing works so that when you go to do it, it's, it's pretty streamlined. Um, or like, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to get someone on my team, set up a profile on your behalf, uh, and make it super easy for you. So I just wanted to go through the other tabs and then I'll show you, uh, I'll demo, uh, what it looks like from a candidate's perspective and from an employer's perspective. Uh, I just wanted to go over, this is not so important. At least you have my information there. If you ever want to reach out, just information about the site and why we did this. Um, FAQs. So this is kind of where you, where you can always look if you're, if you're encountering some kind of issue and it's been dealt with um, or we've encountered the issue already and we've, we have a, a, a um, a prepared uh, workflow for you to go through. Otherwise, it's super straightforward, super easy um, to set up. The only thing I would mention is the, the one, I think the number one thing that's always come up when employers go to set up their profile is the, the image that you, that you use has to be a square image. Just the way it looks on, on your profile, if it's not square, it's going to start cutting off the logo and then people start losing their minds. So just use a square image. And then resources. So I have uh, partners that reach out um, that are also trying to support people during this period um, that if they reach out and would like their information listed on our page, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Like I said, we're trying to make this a community hub uh, for both employers and uh, potential candidates. And then I have NAB services on the left hand side here as well that are specific, uh, specifically relevant to uh, people leave, were looking for work. So I'm going to log in as 
uh, nabs so that you can see what it looks like from um, the dashboard perspective. So again, this should be pretty straightforward if you've ever created a profile on, on, uh, on, on any page that looks like this, it's based on WordPress. Um, but like I said, always available for questions if you have any. So there's this drop down menu that activates once you create a profile and you log in. Um, this is your kind of quick, quick links to things that you may want to do on the site. Um, the first thing that you're always going to do when you create your profile or when you create your, your company page is, is fill out your profile information. Um, none of this information is mandatory, but if you can be more, if, if you can include as much information as possible, uh, it just makes it easier from both a candidate's perspective, um, but also other people looking at the site, trying to figure out, you know, what's available uh, on the site. So as you enter information, it then becomes searchable on the site because everything on the site is searchable. So it just, it makes it more robust and makes it people, it makes you easier to find uh, as people start creating their profiles. So very straightforward. You have a specific URL once you create a profile that you can just share with people. Um, that'll have your, your firm's name in it. So then that becomes your hub if you want to share jobs or um, other information, whether it is amongst your team or with potential candidates. You uh, put up your logo, uh, your name, location, and all, all very basic information around uh, your firm. Another thing I will encourage you to do um, is at the very least connect it with your LinkedIn uh, page if you do use your LinkedIn, your company LinkedIn profile uh, to post jobs um, because then people can then just quickly go to your LinkedIn and check, it, check you out as well. Um, then you save your profile and then submit job is where you actually uh, go to create a listing for a job. So um, you enter the information about the job, the description, the type of job, you select the category of the job, um, the location. So this is another, I wouldn't say critical, it's not required, but if you list the location, especially if your team works, out through, works for multiple offices or you provide support for multiple offices, uh, it just makes it really e much easier for candidates to know where the job is. Um, and then it, it also becomes uh, filterable on, on the site as well. Um, and then most of this information, while it's not like, it's not required, you don't have to enter any of this information if you don't want. Um, I would at least have the email address you want people reaching out to, to, um, to co correspond re related to the job, just so they have that information. Um, you can also enter tags related to specific skill sets that you're looking for if you want those to become then searchable on the platform. And then you just save and preview. So my, um, I already created an example job before uh, for NABS. So sorry, I shouldn't have done that so quickly. So if I click on my jobs, uh, this is where all your jobs are that you've created. Um, and I'll show you the kind of how the workflow works if I'm, an, if I'm a candidate and, and I apply for a job uh, that you've posted. So this is my example job. Um, it was very basic. Obviously, I just threw something together uh, for, for this example. Uh, but this is how the job page would look. So if I'm a candidate, I would just click that apply now and that's it. That kind of initiates the process. Um, so for the employer, that flags to them that I'm interested in that opportunity. And then from the employer's perspective, when I go to applicants jobs, I can see that this individual has applied for this job. And I can search by the jobs that I've posted, um, if you have a ton for whatever reason, or um, you can search by name if you, if you know you're looking for a specific candidate. Um, so a couple of things to notice about this applicant's job uh, window is that depending on how you work internally, um, if the process of shortlisting um, or pre-approving a candidate for, for potential consideration is separate from, like it's 
multiple people. Like you have one person that kind of does the initial filtering and then another person that looks at the shortlist, maybe a manager or a hiring manager or whatever that looks like. Um, you can manage that through this. So if you're the person that's just looking at the 50 candidates for a position and you're just literally going down the list and you take a look at them and you think, ah, no, that doesn't, that person doesn't look, doesn't look good. You just remove them right off the list if you want. Um, reject them, but keeps them, rejecting them keeps them on the list, but just rejects them. Or you can approve them for further consideration, right? So, uh, or depending if you want to use the shortlist functionality, you can just shortlist them. And then that way, whether it's you or another person that comes into the platform at a later date, you can just look at your shortlisted candidates and it's only going to have the shortlisted candidates. So however you want to manage that, you don't have to use, again, you don't have to use all of this functionality, um, but we just thought we wanted to make it as easy, easy as possible if you have multiple people touching this process and managing this process at your firm. Um, if you separate some of those duties, you can do so using this process. So the only other thing I want to mention while I'm here is the fact that um, I mentioned before about downloading the CV of this individual. So everything they've put up here, everything they've uploaded as a candidate, I can then just download in one, in one shot. So I just click this download CV button. Oh, it creates a PDF. Obviously I didn't put much information in my profile. Um, but then this, this is something that I can then share with my team or if you print it out and look at them all at the same time, whatever you want to do, right? Um, so that's just another way that you can use the shortlist functionality and the, and the downloading your CV functionality. So that's pretty much it from an employer's perspective. It's pretty straightforward. So um, submit job to create the actual jobs. Um, my jobs to manage the postings that you've already done. Um, and again, from, from your my jobs um, window, you can then fill the position so you, it's unlisted, uh, you can edit it, or you can just remove it right off the platform if you don't want it to be there anymore, if you've made a mistake or you just wanna get rid of it. Then the applicant jobs, this is where the individuals that have actually applied for your, for your positions are listed. Um, you have all that functionality around searching for the individuals, filtering by the job that you're looking at uh, at that particular time. And then you have all, this, all these functions when uh, you want to be managing the candidates that you're looking at. And then basic stuff like you can delete your profile if you want, uh, log out, you can change your password to generate a, a password uh, notification. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Then you can just always, when, if you ever want to go back to the dashboard that has kind of everything that, you, that you're working on at the time, quick snapshot of what you're looking at as an employer uh, is all here. So any questions so far? No? Okay. So I'm gonna log out uh, from the employer's uh, login and I'm gonna log back in as uh, my dummy candidate, just to show you quickly what it looks like from my perspective or from the candidate's perspective. So this is where I've created a profile um, so you'll notice this is very similar to the employer's uh, login in that uh, some of the same um, terminology is used, but also it's very streamlined in the setup and management of your profile. Um, so I'm going to be prompted to create a profile once I enter, uh, once I create a login, very straightforward. I create all my, I put in all my information related to me, um, select you know, how I want to be categorized as far as uh, skill set is concerned. I can, you know, if I have an external uh, portfolio, for example, if you're, if you're looking at a, if, if it's a creative, uh, they can upload media if they would like, they can link to external sites where they would have a, a potentially a portfolio um, hosted on a web, web page. Uh, so they can do all those things that they would otherwise be able to do on other platforms like LinkedIn or, or similar platforms. Um, and then again, I always would consider, I would always um, encourage the candidate to con connect their LinkedIn. If they don't want to do double work, if they don't want to 
put in any additional work on here if they just want to use it as a way to to create that initial connection with the employer and 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 notify them that they're they're interested in an opportunity at the very least that employer can then go to their linkedin profile and learn more about them um, so pretty straightforward i guarantee you it'll, it won't take more than five minutes uh, and then your profile is created and then the resume is kind of where you can go more in depth if you want. So if as a candidate, because um, another, another way we thought this platform could, could grow is if I'm a freelancer and I have a specific um, combination of skill sets and I list, I'm, I'm very precise and detailed in the way that I, I enter that information on here. Um, employers can then actively go back onto the page and look for potential candidates, even if they haven't applied for a job. So that's another potential uh, outcome of this. So we've already laid that, that functionality in so that if I'm a freelancer and I'm, I'm, I'm used to uh, jumping from opportunity to opportunity, um, I can create a very robust profile and have the opportunity for an employer down the road uh, to potentially find me instead and offer me a, a position. So creating that um, database of potential freelancers as well. So, you know, you, I, you can attach a document if you want it to be a, a Word or a PDF document as far as a, a CV is concerned. You can enter your information, your experience, any awards that you may have won, skill sets. Um, and then again, that could potentially open up the opportunity for employers finding you. And then I will, uh, just before I go into questions, I will show you from a, so this is from the candidate's perspective. They've applied for a job. So I've applied for that same job for simplicity's sake, uh, that example finance position. Um, so when I am searching for jobs, I just click that apply button and it applies to the job, but applies meaning it's communicated to the employer that I'm interested. Also, I can shortlist jobs. So um, if I want to, if, you know, there's a couple of jobs that I'm potentially interested in, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to apply for them yet. I can shortlist the jobs and then go into my shortlist jobs and see, and see the job there. So I also have that option. And then other than that, you know, you have the ability to message employers if you'd like. I, I highly doubt, you know, someone's going to be actively managing a messaging platform from the employer's perspective. So that's probably not going to be ha not going to be happening. Um, and the email address is listed on their profile page so they can just as easily send you an email, which probably makes it easier on both sides. Um, and that's pretty much that's pretty much it from the candidate's perspective. Um, so it's pretty, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. I've already set up probably half a dozen employer profiles on, on employer's behalf and never takes me more than five minutes. So, uh, but if you need any help, you can always reach out uh, if you have any questions about how to get set up. Um, and I encourage you all to use it. It's like I said, so internally we've we've kind of made a we've well we've, we've made a commitment um to manage and promote this for the next year primarily because we want to support as much as possible during uh the recovery after this crisis but also uh we think there's value here in, in just connecting employers and and, and candidates uh, and making it as, as simple as possible for people to find work uh, so we hope you find it, find value there to um, to find candidates, and um, I would be your point person if you ever had any questions about uh, about the page. Um, it's pretty, well, like I said, it's pretty straightforward to use. So I'm just going to um, go to questions if you guys have any. So we uh, we've got a question mark on okay. the candidates side of things. Are yeah. candidates required to upload photos, or is that an option? No, that's completely optional. Great. I guess you'd be you'd be it'd be better to upload a photo potentially because if you're an if you're an employer, yeah. oh, yeah. you come back on. 
Yeah, so one of the things that um, part of our workflow that we have to look at is I can manage the communication a little bit easier with employers because, you know, there's, it's 50 to one type of thing. Like I can co consistently manage those relationships and have those conversations about, you know, where we're thinking, where we're seeing uh, most success as far as, you know, how you build your profile and how you post, et cetera. Um, but there's going to be potentially so many candidates that I can't actively hound people to like upgrade their profile. So what I think what I'm going to do is kind of nudge them every so often and say, heads up, this is what a um, more professional, but also more successful candidate profile looks like. I encourage you to emulate that. And while I don't want to make it too onerous uh, to maintain that, that profile on our page, I don't want to add too much extra work for an individual. You, like I said, you can do it in like five minutes like five, 10 minutes, if you really wanted to like include every single school you went to, and you could just copy in that information over from another platform if you already have that uh, listed somewhere else. So, um, but yeah, it's, I, I agree that the, the photo and a little bit of personal information on there goes a long way. Is there any um, other questions? Yeah, there's been a couple of questions around uh, the notifications. So do job postings get sent to users via email or do users or companies just keep checking for new roles periodically? And then also there was a question about candidates getting notified um, as their application might go through different phases with the employer. So when the employer shortlists or the employer rejects the person for the role, is there any notification to the candidate? Yeah, so um, there, that is not, so I'll start with the second question. They don't get automatically notified if you cut them or, or decide to shortlist them. Um, and that was deliberate because if may, there may be a couple of people managing this and maybe someone, you know, accidentally shortlist someone and then that was not intentional. Like we want it to be up to the employer how and when they want to communicate uh, with potential candidates um, so that the candidate doesn't know if they're being shortlisted or they're being taken off um, or they're being approved for, uh, for their consideration, no. And then um, as far as receiving notifications, so the notification system is within is contained within the platform. So it's not like you receive an email when uh, someone applies for um, a position at the moment. I know that's probably the number one thing people have asked me to do. Uh, so we have kind of a short list of uh, things that we're going to be working on in phases to add functionality to the, to the site. And obviously that, that makes the most sense because you don't want to have to constantly check uh, the website um, daily, let's say, but currently everything is contained within the, within the portal. So when you create a profile, uh, when you shortlist someone, all that notifications only happen within the portal. It's not sending an external communication to uh, your email address. Great. So, so if you were a candidate, you might just want to keep checking in every couple of days or once a week, something like that. Yeah. So, well, what I envision, so, to be completely honest, I didn't want to, I never want to, I never wanted to position this platform as kind of something that solves everything for everyone, because I know that I don't want to, it's not like we want to insert ourselves into whatever hiring process each for how each firm operates. So um, we want, we want to, assist in making that initial connection and make that process as simple as possible, uh, realizing that people are then going to use other platforms or potentially just communicate directly by email. So we don't want to get in the way of that. Is there any other questions? Because I have a few that usually come up that I'll just go over if there's no more questions. No more questions. So go okay. ahead and give us your FAQs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, I, I mentioned I will offer again that um, my team can set up your company profile if you want us to do so just to get you started. Um, and I, I mentioned this in passing before, but just think a little bit about how 
your team wants to manage candidates um, before you create your profile because if as an employer, as a larger group, you create one profile and then you have uh, jobs under, under subsets of that firm, so like specific companies and you want someone else to then come in and only manage those jobs, then you're gonna have to create a different profile just for that single company. So just think a little bit about how you want that to, ma to manage that because by design, your login information is your email address or whoever, whatever, you could use a general inbox uh, address as well. Um, but then if other people have access to that, they're gonna have access to your portal. And um, so you can use sharing functionality. Um, so hopefully as more and more firms use, use the platform, uh, they create a robust profile for the for the opportunity and then you can just send that out uh, to other platforms or you can you know share that on linkedin um, and then that makes it easier because then you don't have to do double work either so if that if if the nabs connects platform is your initial starting point or if somewhere else is your initial starting point that's completely fine we're just looking to make the connection initially um and just also wanted to reinforce the whole FAQs page. Like as I work um, through questions with various partners, I always, I'm always adding to that page uh, to try to capture what, what people are asking about. Uh, but you can always reach out to me anytime uh, if you have any questions. And that's it as far as prepared. If anything's come up in the last <laughs> 10 seconds, let me know. So go to the site, NABS Connects, um, check it out. I guarantee you, if you create a profile, it's not gonna take you more than five minutes. Uh, and that's where you're ready to go. If, if you're ready to post an opportunity right now, that's, that's fantastic. If not, um, you know you have, you have the profile set up and you, can, you, you know how to use it, so you can easily post whenever those opportunities come up. And, uh, and just to mention as well, you may have mentioned this earlier, but candidates do have the ability or, or there is the functionality there for interns and students to use yeah. a little bit of a functionality to identify themselves. So don't be afraid to post entry level positions. And um, we're going to be doing a lot of work with Advertising Unlimited um, with our student population, our recently graduating student population. Um, and so what a time to graduate. Eh? <laughs> yeah, we're definitely interested in making sure that we're supporting those folks um, as they go through what will be for them a really uncertain time. Um, and, uh, and so this is also a good help again to, to, to Mark's point, it's not an end all and be all for everything but it's definitely a help. Um, and it's definitely something that I encourage everybody to get their profile set up on. Um, and you may not have a job today and that's fine, um, but you may have one tomorrow and then you'll be ready for it and, uh, and can help folks that have been displaced and dislocated uh, from this crazy virus. So thank you so much, Mark. If we don't have any other questions, um, then I will We'll, we'll let you go with just one last reminder that we are doing another session on Thursday afternoon, I believe it's at four o'clock, um, on how to sleep better. Uh, we are still hearing from folks uh, and we actually just did, um, uh, saw some wave three research from Chorus this morning, or sorry, early this afternoon. There still is uncertainty, there still is anxiety, even though we're seeing on the horizon that things are soon going to be getting back to normal and we're still hearing a lot of issues with sleep. So go ahead and direct your folks to our session where we have um, our fitness professional who's going to be giving us some tips and guidance on how to sleep better. Um, and I can't believe how many people I've got like, invite me to that session because I want to make sure because they're very, very concerned, their partners are concerned. Um, I want them to get a better sleep. So uh, stay tuned for that and check it out at uh, the ICA.ca um, forward slash community. And the schedule is there and all the joint details. So thank you again, Mark, for joining us today. Thank you for taking us through um, this fabulous initiative and amazing and props to you guys and the talent code for pivoting so quickly and getting this up and running um, as a free resource to the community. Um, and, uh, and thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you to the ICA for giving me the opportunity today. I really appreciate it.
Thank you. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.